Hey y'all, my name is Nick and welcome back to State of Woods Cove. In our last video, we unveiled and unboxed our new Thunder Laser CO2 laser. If you missed that video, there's a link to it right there. In this video, we're gonna talk about the things that you need to know or have on hand before your machine arrives. This is gonna be some information that I wish I had known prior to my machine actually getting to my shop and being able to set it up in a way that's gonna be the easiest and fastest for me. The first thing that I wanna talk about is receiving your machine. It's gonna come on a box truck or a semi truck and it's a big unit depending on what size machine you got. Now, offloading that piece of equipment is a little bit difficult unless you have a really good truck driver. For me, we tried to use the tractor. We have a three series John Deere tractor and it even had issues trying to pick that box up. It even says on Thunder Laser's website that you may need to rent a forklift to offload these off and then I think it's a good idea because that's a big unit. Luckily, our truck driver had two pallet jacks and we were able to use the lift gate on the back of the truck but it was a little scary by doing it with just two people but without that second pallet jack, I don't know how we would have gotten this off we probably would have had to rent a forklift. Once you've installed your laser into your shop, the next thing to work on is power. Now, these Thunder lasers use a 20 amp dedicated 110 plug. And what that means is that you have a 20 amp outlet for your machine, but it's on a dedicated breaker. So we have a 20 amp breaker inside of our panel and it directly links to this 20 amp plug on 110. Now, let me explain that a little bit better. All of the outlets in your shop or your garage or even your home are usually tied into one or two 15 amp or 20 amp breakers, depending on what your electrical power's needs were or the code for your area. Now what this means for your Thunder Laser is that you want one individual breaker going to one individual outlet to run the machine. If you have multiple things plugged in with the laser and the laser's running and you turn on something else and that amperage pull goes way too high, it's gonna trip your breaker and then you're gonna lose your file and your positioning on the Thunder Laser. So what you may wanna do is call an electrician ahead of time to make sure that they're able to get you that dedicated line. Now, if you wanna run it yourself, make sure that you're trying to follow the electrical codes for your county or your state because those things can be very important when it comes time to selling your home or your shop. You have the options of running it in Romex or you can run it in MC like I did here. Now again, I'm not a licensed electrician, so I don't wanna tell you how to do it. So it may be best to reach out to an electrician in your area and get help with setting this up. Now that we have the power out of the way, it's time to look at the exhaust system for the Thunder Laser. I like to go ahead and set this up before I put my machine in its final destination because I don't wanna to have to keep moving everything back and forth. So we're gonna set this up now. So Thunder Laser sends you almost everything that you need to hook up the vacuum system and get all of the fumes and smoke out of your area. So they send you the exhaust hoses. They send you two of them, one for before the inline blower and one for after. Speaking of inline blower, they send you this really nice blower that plugs right into the back of your machine. So no extra power is needed. They do send you the hose clamps that you need to hook all this up. But what you're gonna need extra that they don't send and include in the kit is you're gonna need to have the vent for the outside of the building. And this is gonna be what your hose connects to and this is how it evacuates out of your shop. You will need that and you will need the respective hose clamp that goes with it. For us, this is a six inch hose vent hood and this is the six inch clamp. So along with the vent hood, you're gonna need a six inch hole saw to cut your hole through your wall. Really think about where you wanna put the machine because once you drill that hole in the wall, it's always there and make sure to fill all of the gaps around the vent hood with silicone to make it weather tight. So this is where that six inch hose clamp is gonna come in really handy. We're trying to reduce an eight inch down to this six inch exhaust hood pipe. And so what we're gonna do is just mount this on and screw it down really, really tight. That should make a good enough seal around this pipe. You can go and purchase a six inch to eight inch reducer so that you can mount it on here and you can use an eight inch clamp and it actually works a little bit better, but I don't like the fact that it's gonna stick out from my wall so far. So I'm just gonna do it the way that it comes naturally with the Thunder Laser. The mounting bracket for this inline fan is directly behind that motor housing. So all you have to do is loosen up the two collars and remove that motor. Mounting it to the wall is a quick and easy breeze. 
Now here's a little inside tip for you. If you shorten your vacuum hose by just trimming it to length, it will help to reduce any resistance and help for that ventilation flow out of your machine to be much higher. Perfect. So it's always smart to cut your ductwork to the length that you need. Having extra will increase the resistance and it'll hurt your vacuum exhaust on the way out. So cutting them shorter is always a better plan. What I like to do is I like to use some extra foil tape. This is HVAC foil tape. This comes in really handy to seal everything up tight so you don't have any fumes or smoke exiting your ventilation system. So the next thing that we wanna work on before we ever fire up our laser is the water chiller. Now this is designed to keep that CO2 laser cool when all that firing of the laser beam is going on. So what you're gonna need that they don't include in the kit is distilled water. It's gonna take about one and a half to two gallons of water to fill this water cooler. This is really cheap at the grocery store, just a couple bucks per gallon, but this is gonna go a long way. Thunder Laser does a great job of labeling everything on the machine so that you know exactly what plugs to wear. So having the inlet and the outlet, the alarm output, and the power supply is just very easy to hook up. Start filling up your tank with a funnel and the distilled water and fill it up to the point where the water line just gets into that full area on the indicator. So the next item that we're going to talk about is the compressed air for the air blow system on this laser. Now, this is going to be sort of an option for you if you want to go down this road. Thunder Laser does send a air compressor specifically designed for these machines. Now, one thing I want you to be aware of is that they do have padding wrapped around this box to keep it nice and safe. But don't throw it away because this padding is actually the vibration reducing pad that you'll put underneath your compressor so that it's not bouncing around and vibrating across the room on the floor. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to do the initial setup with the machine with the compressor that comes with it. Thunder Laser says on their website to always do your initial setup and calibration with the air compressor on your kit. Now you can upgrade your system to an air compressor unit if you have an air compressor in your shop already. So what this is gonna allow you to do is connect to your existing air compressor lines that you have running in your shop. The benefit of that is to allow you to hook up to the existing compressor and not have to worry about this little pump running continuously. What you wanna be aware of is that you want to have a regulator on this system to regulate it down to the required PSI for the Thunder Laser. The normal air compressors running in your shop are gonna be at way too high PSI for the laser itself. You also want to have a water separator in it so that you make sure that there's condensation out of your system at all times. This little air compressor does really, really good from Thunder Laser, but if you want to rely on your existing line and reduce the power and make sure that this doesn't have to run continuously, then this could be a good option for you. So now that everything is pretty much ready to go, it's time to put the laser in its final location. Now, it is important to level your machine, and so what we're gonna use is a big four foot level. The longer the level, the more accurate you're gonna be. You can use a smaller level, like a two foot level, but I wouldn't go any lower than this because a tiny, tiny little level is not gonna give you the accuracy that you're gonna want. Now, here's one more tip for you. When you're removing the foam that supports the laser tube in shipping, make sure to not touch the tube with your fingers. You don't want the oil on your fingers to create a hot spot on that tube and have that to burn up more quickly. So I hope you found this video informative. It's nice to see the items that you're sort of gonna need before your machine arrives, the things that aren't included with the unit itself. Thunder Laser does a great job of detailing out all of the information that you need to do your initial setup, but I like having everything out visually so that you can make sure that you don't make multiple trips over to the big box store. If you think of any more items or information that I left out in this video, please leave it in the comments below. It's great to help others and educate them in the Thunder Laser community. So I hope this was useful for you. I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you on the next video.